Should you max out twice a week or will this get you snapped up? Well, first let me state that this can in fact be done, but I strongly recommend against it. Why? It's simply not sustainable and greatly speeds up the overreaching process to the point where you're constantly feeling beat up and having to take deloads all the time. And for what? Maybe 15% more gains? This may seem worth it at first, but once you realize just how much more effort is required for everything, your interest might go down. In fact, you're looking at someone who did it for almost six months straight. And I can tell you that I'd probably never do this again. See, during this 405 benching phase, I was sleeping nine to 12 hours a night, eating like a blow maxer because I was so freaking hungry all the time. And when not training, I barely had enough energy to work. That said, I did get really good at maxing out and those were some of the best gains of my life. But the truth is, I could have probably gone to the same spot without destroying myself so much. Like just to say, I'm currently using the exact same template, but only maxing out once a week. And I can tell you that the gains are pretty similar from what I'm used to, but recovery is that much better. Now that said, if you don't wanna to listen to me and still desire maximum intensity twice a week, then I can at least give you the best possible guidelines on successfully pulling this off, with some substitutions, of course. Cause I'd be a liar to state that this doesn't work or that I regret my experience. All right then, let's cover the two most crucial factors for frequently hitting owner maxes. Firstly, your attempts cannot be RPE 10 for every session or the rest of the work that comes right after will really suffer. Grinders are fun at all and make you strain like no other, but they also create a ton of fatigue. So instead, you'll ideally want to be in the 9 to 9.5 RPE zone, which is best achieved by taking small, limited weight jumps. Keep in mind, this is not a competition, so don't hype yourself up either. And the goal is to hit a training max, which will usually be a PR, but in truth, doesn't have to be. So, that also means you should also never fail lifts. Like if this is happening, you are greatly overshooting your numbers and won't get results. So please stop ego lifting, I beg you, bro. Secondly, movement variability is a must. Basically, each subsequent max effort lift must be as dissimilar as possible. That could even mean featuring completely random movements. Or better yet, just being mindful of strength curves and difficulty. For example, if day one included a medium grip touch and go bench press, day two should not be a close grip pause bench. Sure, there might be a small weight difference, but you're practically doing the same exercise. So on the specificity scale, it shouldn't be one to one. A far superior choice would be a medium to close grip Swiss bar bench press or a three count close grip Larson press. Though in general, focusing on triceps, you can always alternate between raw and accommodating resistance. So day one could be a bench press with 30 pounds of chains and day two, an inclined close grip bench. Or bench press with mini bands followed by a one board press. You see how that blends out? Don't just stick to minute changes. Variety will keep you psychologically and physically fresh. That said, one important rule I have is to not do double overloads even if the tensions are vastly different. If day one is a floor press with 60 pounds of chains, day two should not be a bench press with 90 pounds of chains or even using micro mini bands. It's either double raw or one raw, no exceptions. Moving forward. On those days where you really don't want to max out but still have that desire to lift heavy, you'll want to work up to a heavy top set and probably do a raw, simple variation. I favor the regular pause bench, floor press, incline bench, and even weighted dip. And like reps of three to five or six to eight. Not really a fan of doubles or creeping up the reps too high since we'll be accumulating volume right after. So this is your opportunity to get mixed PRs with higher percentages, which is not only fun, but provides that extra confidence that general strength carryover is happening. In addition, it should be noted that depending on your limb lengths, some ranges of motion or exercises may need to be reserved to once a week. For example, if your arms are extremely short and you're completely bent forward when deadlifting, it may not be wise to max out from the floor twice a week. In this case, alternating between max effort squats and deadlifts or deadlifts with bands and chains followed by block pulls might be a superior choice. Whereas if you're an advantage long arm deadlifter, you can creep up the specificity that much higher 
like doing deficit deadlifts day one and snatch grip deadlifts day two. Same goes for the bench. Like shorter lifters can probably do weighted dips day one and camera bar bench press day two. Whereas the taller guy would wreck his shoulders doing that. He would need to emphasize variations that allow for more out of less weight or changing the range of motion itself since we're already maximally stretching down here in many workouts. So either doing double partials like day one floor press and day two board press or alternating between regular full range of motion and partials like floor press and wide grip pause bench. So you don't do extreme partials, but there's still somewhat of a reduction of range of motion. Basically, the more gifted you are on a given lift, the easier it is to not mess up the exercise rotation. Otherwise, you truly have to think about leverages affecting net recovery. Finally, it's extremely important that you take your deloads before it's too late. Like I mentioned before, this style of programming is very hard on recovery and you will overreach faster than normal. So if you're used to deloading once every three months, I would literally cut that in half. Every four to six is probably where you wanna be if you plan on keeping the intensity that high for the majority of the year. But if it's a small short-term phase, fine. You can milk a bit longer, but don't complain if your joints start hurting after as fast routines usually lead to problems. Now regarding how you deload, it's actually quite simple. All you have to do now is remove the max effort work and drop the percentages on your main back down stuff to around 40 to 45% of your one or max. Accessories can also be cut out or be replaced for high rep band pump work. Do that for one week and I guarantee you'll come back feeling like a tank and probably stronger than ever. That said, a bonus tip I can provide is that when you're right about to overreach, you can go even more psychotic with the max effort variations, such that fatigue hits an all-time high, which increases the likelihood of super compensation taking place. So on your final week before deloading, you can hit RP10 on both max effort days while doing dead stop work with high band and chain overloads. This strategy right here is kind of similar to what Dr. Mike Isito recommends with lowering your reps in reserve as you get closer to peak status. You pretty much never start a program this way, but if that's how you're ending off, you're gonna deload anyway, right? So why not go all out provided that you don't get injured? Of course, this isn't mandatory, but I did wanna share this information with you guys for those that are ballsy to try it out. And with that said, you should be all set with maxing out twice a week. I gave you my best possible advice that's been thoroughly tested and I have no doubt that by doing this, you too will get explosive gains. Just be careful and listen to your body, all right? So enjoy the gains. Let me know if you plan on incorporating a similar method. Like, are you gonna do this or not? Let's hear it, and I'll talk to you guys next time.